See, look at the height now. <coughs> you do this to me all the time. When soon I get on camera, you shrink my size down. I see you different. I do. My nose is at the top of your head. Um, look where my nose is at the moment. It is down here. Well, that's because you're leaning over. <laughs> because you know it doesn't make any difference. Okay. Oh, which day did I go to that party? I don't know. We're just, that, yeah, you, get, uh, you can get. This, this is the bad part. Well, actually, we have the individual vlogs. No, we're going to just. This is just like only an overview of what, you know, like we. Um, like we came in a day early, which was actually smart because we did get an overview of the situation. It wasn't a good day because it's early. Yeah, but okay, this is all camp. And this is not a spring chick, and today we're going to be talking about our overview of Sundance. Yeah, it's just going to be, you know, it's not a wrap up, it's just, we've all, this is our first time ever to Sundance, it's the first time ever to a major film festival. We've been to the smaller ones. It's, there's no comparison between Sundance and the smaller film festivals. No, there really isn't. But we do still have the individual vlogs, so go ahead and pay attention to those. Those will talk about what we did on an individual basis. But one of the things we'll tell you about Sundance is um, when your friends give you advice about it, believe it. Yeah, no. Okay, <laughs> here's the problem we didn't know. We knew that, some, okay, Sundance is sort of like a sprawling community. It's got a historical well, district. Well, Park City is. Park City is where... The historical district of Park City is basically where the Sundance Festival is held, and it's a really a crappy place to hold a film festival, folks. Well, you see, one of the best things that you can do is to plan early and plan wisely. Well, we had CES and the Golden Globes happened just beforehand, yeah. and so... Well, what happened was they backed up CES on us for a week. This would not have happened except for the backups. So I we, mean, literally, we had CES, came back from Golden Globes the same day, had one day and then we left for Sundance. So we really were right on top of each other for everything. Yeah, and we, you know, so, uh, and we got to Sundance. We actually were smart enough that we split our drive up to Sundance in two days, which we actually found was smarter compared to everybody else. Well, yeah, it was because, see, it's probably, this is 10, 11, 12 hours drive one way. Now that's in good weather. That's in good weather. And when we went, we had, mm, the weather wasn't bad, but we know we've got a Kia, which actually, was Serrano, what it is? Yes. It actually well, performed exactly the, the specifications, folks. But, uh, uh, the challenging part is there's, there's I knew um, two other sets of people that drove over there. Um, one of them, they had... <coughs> yeah, this is the result. I know. This is sinus problems, not pneumonia. They had four people in the car. They drove up... Um, and I told them it would take a while. Well, they drove up, and guess what? Um, they got a spinning ticket on the way for yeah, quite a hundred miles because now. What happens is, I won't say the word ST, but there is a lot of ST going on in Utah. ST, what's that? Uh, the first word is speed, and then guess what direction? They, they bump you up to 80 miles an hour, and then they give you a warning that they that mm -hmm. reduce speed. But the problem is, is... <laughs> you know, they don't reduce the speed, and they go, Shh. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. It's a, it's the, it, they're testing out the 80-mile speed limit. Um, the other friend that went up there, um, she, well, she didn't realize that she was going up until the night before, and so then she made the range with the night before, went up there. She was so exhausted when she stopped in Vegas um, and got an oil change. See, she wasn't, <laughs> didn't really know she was going. Um, she fell asleep while they were doing the oil change, and they had to wake her up. Yeah, and there so. was um, uh, a lot of people that, that we know that went off the road in the bad weather because, I mean, it wasn't, it ne wasn't necessarily because they were tired or this and that. It's because, um, because we had one major, one really bad day of snow, and well, the uh, highway patrolman, you know, mm -hmm. we told, I had change luckily, so I was, I was better off than a lot of them, but he told me, the biggest problem we have is they're coming up from California with California tires, and this is snow country. Right, and one of the things is California drivers do not know how to drive in snow. Mm -hmm. That's for one. Um, and so. And a lot of them do have rear wheel drive vehicles, not front wheel drive, which means the area they have to control the car basically tends to go the direction the back wants you to go. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and like I said, there's nothing wrong with, you said, there's nothing wrong with California tires, except unfortunately, a lot of California tires are, they basically got expensive racing type because they got slicks. 
Well, you know, one of my friends, she rented a car in Salt Lake and they knew she was coming to Park City. Yeah. Well, apparently the rental car had bald tires. Yeah. And so she pulled it out of the driveway. The first thing she did was hit an embankment. Yeah. And then had to get the car pulled out. That's fun. No, and they know better. I mean, they, uh, they know better. They're renting you the car. Okay. You, you rent the car so many it's going to be. We can tell you one other important thing about Snowmageddon. It didn't happen. Despite the fact you saw viral videos all over the world, it didn't happen. It just, you know, they rewrote, you know, mm -hmm. basically when you're in charge, you rewrite the history, and they wrote the history that never happened. So mm -hmm. the fact that we had snow up to, you know, her bikini bottom in some places, that never happened. Uh, yeah, actually, I do have pictures of some snow like that. <laughs> yeah, but the, every, even though everybody's got pictures, I can tell you that one day I made three attempts to get into. The uh, the closest I could get to where she could get to was two miles. That was the closest I could get because the uh, snow was at the top of my tires. I know, and you're sitting there thinking, is it really all about the snow? Well, yes and no, because the snow does make a difference as to your enjoyment during the time you're there. Yeah. Um, if you're a skier and a fresh dump of snow the next day for skiing, it makes it absolutely wonderful. The wonderful. problem was... Then I was there. Well, God, the, we were talking beautiful. I mean, the nights were not really great because it, it was snow flurry, snow showers, and it was freezing like hell, which made everything got icy. But during the day, it was beautiful. And were there skiers on the slopes? Mm -hmm. I, I ski. I've skied all my life. She skis. And I'd have been, if I had skis, I'd have been out in the slopes. Yeah. Pure and simple. I mean, I was dressed to go skiing. But uh, what was is that most of them don't ski that come up there, which is funny. <laughs> Actually, it would have been wonderful to go skiing. Now, as far as the film festival goes, they have, let's see, if you plan on going to Sundance, the best thing is to plan early on in advance if you plan on seeing a lot of movies. You need to get a patron's ticket because it cuts down your, we did find out, it, okay, it doesn't make a boom boom about whether you have a ticket or not, you still have to stand in line. But a patron's ticket gets you up at the front of the line. The patron's ticket will allow you to walk in without waiting. Yeah. Another ticket, if you bought like a season, like friends bought like 20 tickets or something, um, you don't get to walk in like a patron does. It doesn't cost you as much. But what happens is, um, with your tickets, you go in, then you get a number yeah. after you wait in line. Yeah. But you're still waiting in line. I know, and then, then you can go away, and then they, then they start calling, the numbers get to start going in. And then after they go fill all those up, then the people that were waitlisted, yeah. basically all the standby tickets, and uh, it, they could go in. And the tickets on the back say you have to be there X amount of time before the thing starts to guarantee if you can get in. Which and means, what that means also is, um, depending on the location, you will be standing outside in the snow slash cold oh, would while be, you're waiting. I, 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 okay, we'll put it this way. We were lucky enough to stay with the crew that produced one of the hottest movies of Sundance and they were from New Orleans, they would not they could not be happier to leave the area. <laughs> because that is not their type of weather. But the guy, you know, I waited out, but I, I wasn't dressed for being snowed on and I said, Oh, it's a snow resort. Well yes, but there hasn't been any snow all year. Mm -hmm. So they were dressed more or less. Oh, they had been dressing. See, part of it is a lot of people, we had looked, there hadn't been any snow. There wasn't expected to be any snow. Mm -hmm. So if you dress like that, you were totally unprepared in case there was snow. Such as a, a young actress that's got a cable TV show on at the moment wearing high heels. Oh. Yeah, which was not, well, there was no snow when she got there. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the snow comes and it's not like you go to the corner store and buy shoes, which you actually... Okay. They did have stores where you could have bought shoes. Okay, here's the bit. Sundance is held in the historical district as a means of trying to keep the historical district alive. But if you leave that area, you've got shopping centers, you've got Walmarts, I mean, you've got fast food places. I mean, there's one fast food place uh, in, the, in the central district. But when you go out, you've got McDonald's, you've got Wendy's, you've got everything that you have in Salt Lake City, including pizza places. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, it is a major, it actually Park City is a sprawling, which is funny. The historical district is old and is basically sort of dwindling as the city itself is just growing like a weed. I mean, they, they claim Park City, you know, what is it, 17 miles beyond the, the uh, which means sort of like, you think, think Los Angeles, this goes on forever. Oh, the other part is we thought, because we do have industry connections, that some of the people 
um, with the movies would be able to get you tickets. <laughs> we found out that was a um, mistake. I will tell you no, <laughs> because unless you already have the extra ticket. Now that's like, oh no, well, even though you knew somebody that was a producer or director, uh, my friend, one of my friends was staying with somebody who had a movie there, and they were either the producer or the director, and they still couldn't get an extra ticket. They basically... Other friends that financed a movie could not get an extra ticket. No. We were staying with, I mean... They, the best that we could do was one movie and some screeners, mm -hmm. and actually staying with people that had one of the hottest movies there, who filled us in on everything that went on. We got, we have the ultimate insiders think about a hot movie. No, when we say the ultimate, it's because we stayed at the same place oh. and... <laughs> yeah, they, they had a good time the first night they were there. Let's see. Let's party at the hot oh, tub. Oh yeah, party at the hot tub. We had 3.30 in the morning, hey, we're going go to we're gonna go to Salt Lake. You want to come with us and get some pizza? Mm -hmm. Which, as I talked to the, one of the people that lived there, there's nothing open at Salt Lake at 3.30 in the morning. <laughs>